God's word for you today is the greatest evidence. Someone say the greatest evidence. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. My God. We thank God for our worship team. Amen. That was, that was amazing. That was amazing. Never, never lose the opportunity to get into the presence of God. It doesn't matter what is on your mind. It doesn't matter what is going on around you. This is the place where you can tell everybody, excuse me, right? Excuse me. I am going to my father's house. I will not be interrupted. Press into worship. Press into the presence of God because the healing and the breakthrough is in his presence. Somebody say amen. Acts chapter 1, verse number 1. Bible says that, And the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day that he was taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had presented himself alive after his suffering, by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. Say 40 days. 40 days he presented himself by many infallible proofs, he manifested the glory of God. And so there is, you know, we can get into the historical discussion of the evidence of the, of the resurrection, right? You know, empty tomb and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the disciples by no means overcame the soldiers, right? Because they were stronger. It was a dangerous time to be a disciple of Jesus to the point that Peter himself said, I don't know him. And so the time surrounding Jesus' death and resurrection was not a time to say, I am a Christian. <laughs> it was a time to scatter <laughs> and to hide and to run away. And so there was no way they came back and said, you know what, let us fight the guards and take his body. For what? Right? That, but then Jesus, upon the resurrection, showed himself to Peter. Remember on the, on, the, on the seashore, he said, woe is me, right? I am unclean, right? And then he... Uh, he showed himself after many days with many infallible proofs. Infallible means unchangeable. It's, it's, it's like unchallengeable. It is, it is truth. It is final. By many truths and by many appearances, he showed himself to the people around that time that, hey, I am alive. And so our, our faith in the resurrection is not an assumption. Somebody say amen. You cannot let anyone question the resurrection in your life. You cannot question the resurrection of Jesus Christ in your life. For without the resurrection of Christ, our faith is nothing. The Bible says that if the resurrection be not true, then our faith in Christ be useless. Somebody say amen. And so the resurrection is critical to our faith. Otherwise, our Jesus becomes like every other God. He becomes a good teacher. He becomes a wonderful man. He becomes a kind man. Um, but without the resurrection, he was a great and awesome teacher. That's it. But the resurrection is evidence and that our God is greater, and that our God is mighty, and that there is no one like him. Somebody say amen. And now I want to take it further today. We can, we, can, we can talk about all the evidences and all the things that can be shown you about the resurrection of Christ. Um, but this morning, I submit to you, and that the greatest evidence of the resurrection is you. Somebody say, I am the greatest evidence of the resurrection. I am the greatest evidence of the resurrection. Let's go to John chapter 11. John 11 verse 25. John chapter 11 verse 25. John 11 verse number 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, and though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so Bible is saying that those who believe in Christ will live. Somebody say amen. I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you will live. And so when you are alive in Christ, you are the one who believes in Christ. Therefore, your life is confirmation of the resurrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Because at that time, they did not see Jesus. We did not see Jesus die, did we? 
Did you see him die on the cross? You didn't see him die on the cross, right? Did you see him resurrect? No, we didn't see him resurrect, right? But the evidence is in your life. Because if there is no resurrection, then there is no change in you. If there's no resurrection, there is no power in you. If, if there is no resurrection, there is no testimony in you. And so other people in this world can never go back to the days of the New Testament uh, to find out, did Jesus die? Did he raise again? The only evidence they have of the resurrection is you. Whosoever believes in him, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Your life is the testimony of the resurrection. Your life is directly connected to the resurrection. Bible says that if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Romans 8, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in us, he, he will quicken our mortal bodies. So the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells where? Aha. Uh -huh. And so the same one that resurrected him is resurrected in my life. So the evidence today of that resurrection that happened is that I am here. Is that I am following Jesus. Is that I am. I belong unto God. Somebody say amen. Jesus says that I am the light of the world. Did, did he not say that? Jesus is the light of the world, right? And then in Matthew, he says that word. You are the light of the world. We are made from the same stuff. And so, because I am continuing the work of Jesus, if he is light and I am light, I am evidence that Jesus is alive. Because if Jesus is not alive, and then the light went out. But if the light still shines in me, if the light and the glory of God is still in me, then that is evidence that Jesus is alive. Now, this sounds a lot, uh, uh, this, can, this can put some undue pressure on you, but I'm glad. Somebody say amen. Because the only evidence people have in this world of Jesus Christ is you. When they talk to you, when they see your life, when they hear your testimony, will they hear Jesus? The Bible says that by your works, they will see your good works and glorify your Father. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When they see your good works, when they see in your life, when they see what God is doing in you, they say, oh, there's something different about you. Tell me about your God. But if there's no difference, then the resurrection. What is the evidence of the resurrection if we as believers are not living the life? The Bible says that, 2 Corinthians, that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Christ. And we beseech you. Be ye reconciled unto God. Sound booth here, help me. Second Corinthians, when I mention it, then click it. Hallelujah. That, that, that be thou reconciled unto God. If Jesus did the work of reconciliation, and I am an ambassador of reconciliation, and then I am continuing the work of Jesus, and so Jesus never died. You know what I'm saying? He died and he resurrected and so therefore he lives. He continues to live and so therefore my life is an evidence of the resurrection. That's why you cannot tolerate death in your life. During worship, this was impressed upon me very heavily and that you know what? Uh, 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 I, uh, God has been good. Has he not been good? God has been good, right? God has been good to us and God has been good to me. Um, but I'm, I'm going to make this statement and take it and understand it in the light of what I'm saying. And that I feel like in some areas, I've been a shadow of myself. But with the resurrection power, that is not acceptable. Living a form of godliness, living a form of increase, living a form of, 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 of godliness, not in the sense of being holy, but in the sense of like God, in the goodness of God, in the favor of God. There are some parts of your life that are not you. They are still buried. They are still hidden. But Paul says, the life which I now live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. So I am no longer living the dead life. I am living life in Christ. And so if he has resurrected, then I must resurrect. 
if he has resurrected, then every area of my life must respond to the power of the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That means sickness must go. And that means pain must go. That means confusion must go because I am resurrected. Many of us are dealing with, with, with depression and bondage and brokenness. But in Christ, I am made whole. Somebody say amen. I want to provoke you this morning um, that if we, are, if, we, if we have the evidence of the resurrection, if we say Jesus is alive, if we are not like Thomas who said, unless I see Jesus, you know, face to face, I'm not going to believe it. The Bible said that blessed are we, why, who have not seen yet believed. That's us. Right? The disciples saw and they believed. We are of those that have not seen but yet believed. That is faith, right? Faith is the substance of things who fall, the evidence of things not seen. And so we have faith in Him. The evidence is in our lives. If we say the evidence is in our lives, we need to see the power of God. We need to see the, I, I pray that there'll be, there'll be areas of your life that are buried that will resurrect in the name of Jesus. And the area of joy. And Bible says that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, um, but it's what? It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you experiencing the joy of the Lord? Are you walking in the peace of the Lord? Are you walking in the right? If you are not walking in that, then, the resur- then where is the evidence of the resurrection? The picture God gave me in the first service was, was many, many people, you know, uh, the chains are broken, right? But you are still carrying your chains. So they are broken off of you in the name of Jesus. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And now you picked up the chains. And so the weight of the chain is still controlling your life. You still can't receive anything from God because you are holding on to chains. You can't give anything to anybody because you are still holding on to chains. We break that off in the name of Jesus. We let it go in the name of Jesus. The power of the resurrection means you don't take your grave clothes with you. Hallelujah. They went into the tomb and, the, and his clothes were what? Folded nicely up and there and he was gone. You don't take your grave clothes with you. You don't take the tombstone. You know what? I'm going to take this for evidence. No, you don't need that. Leave it behind. Hallelujah. You are free in the name of Jesus. Receive that in your spirit. I am not going to carry around the chains. I am free in the name of Jesus. Listen, I am excited to walk into a new season after today. The people are saying, uh, you know, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, having fun, family together, that's good. But I am looking that after this service, I am walking into a new season. I had to get violent in my spirit because enough, enough of the enemy taking away from me and say, it's okay, you are blessed of the Lord. If I'm blessed of the Lord, let me see the blessing. I am tired of, you know, you know how sometimes our bosses do, they give, you, uh, 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 they give you more responsibility and a new title, but no raise. I'm tired of that. You know, they make you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are assistant deputy vice president of operations and international offices. Show me the money. Back it up, right? Don't just give me a title. Back it up. And so I'm tired of the enemy saying, oh, yes, I see you are blessed. I don't mind you hearing you are blessed and you are favored so far as you don't see it. I want to see the evidence in my life. The manifestation of the goodness of God, of the glory of God. My Jesus had a treasurer. He was a very, he was a very notorious one. Hallelujah. But yet, our Jesus had a treasure. Now, you don't need a treasure if you just have a pocket book. Hallelujah. He was blessed. He walked in the fullness of God. Our Jesus was a healer. That means that everyone around him was healed. He had compassion. Our Jesus manifested the glory of God. Church, my cry today for myself and for us is that are we seeing the manifestation? Is this Resurrection Sunday? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's alive. He's alive. Then we go back, carry our chains and get back into our caves of bondage. Or are we going to come out and say, no, I am going to walk in the everlasting plan and purpose of God for my life. Because if I don't see the translation, then guess what? The world will not see it. If I cannot say resurrection is real, right? 
because it is real in my life. The world, the only picture they see of Jesus is you. The only evidence they see is you. All of a sudden, it, it, it makes you begin to, I know you, you knew this, but you didn't want to think about it. And that you are now a representative of the kingdom. So the way you talk, the way you think, the way you act is, is testifying of Jesus. All of a sudden, some of us want to hide. You want to run away and hide. Because has your life been a testimony of Jesus? If you are the evidence of the resurrection, the power of God in you, the same spirit that raised him dwell in you. He is the light. You are the light. You are born of God. You are an overcomer. If all of that is real and the world is looking at us, what are they seeing? I want to tell you this. Um, Thomas was still stuck on Good Friday. He says, unless I see a different Jesus than the one I saw crucified, don't tell me anything else. I know you want to say, no, he's alive, he's alive, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if I don't see him with my own hands, with, with my own eyes and touch him with my own hands, I don't believe it. Many of us are stuck in Good Friday. On Good Friday, our Lord Jesus suffered, eh? Did he, he, he not suffer? He suffered for us, right? He endured the cross, the shame of the cross, right? Being spat on, being beat up, being tore up. You know, if, if you missed uh, the um, Good Friday service next year, don't miss it. Amen. It was good. Hallelujah. It was wonderful. And um, he suffered. But why are you still in Good Friday? Today is what? Resurrection Sunday, right? He's alive, he's alive. Um, but let's talk about last year and the year before. He's been alive for over 2,000 years. And so let's, let's settle this. Why are you still parked on Good Friday? You are parked on Good Friday when you are still enduring suffering. I must endure this. Now, the Bible says that in this life you have trouble. And so the evidence of trouble is not the absence of God's glory. It's not. <laughs> you just fix it, step on it, climb over it, and keep going. And so trouble is not evidence of God's... Uh, trouble doesn't mean that God is not with you. How you look at trouble. If you are an overcomer, then you are not just, you know what, I'm just enduring, I'm just carrying my own cross, you know. What was that? After Jesus carried the cross on Good Friday... But if you are stuck on Good Friday, you are hauling the cross of everything that Jesus did. If Jesus paid it all, then what are you paying for? What are you carrying it for? But we have this mentality of suffering. Some people, some of us, we can't take anything free given to us. If someone say, God bless you, God bless you, you receive it, and you are like, uh, and so, uh, what do you want? You are suspicious of every blessing that comes to you. You think when someone gives you something, they want something back. Because you are, you are, you are used to paying for everything. Hallelujah. We are used to suffering. We have the mindset of, I must endure. If it's too easy, you don't want it. Mm. If it comes easy, then it's like, hmm, there's something else. You can't enjoy the favor of God. You can't enjoy Resurrection Sunday because you are still stuck on carrying a cross on Good Friday. Say, I don't suffer. Say boldly, I don't suffer. Say, say. <laughs> Some of you are still thinking about, is it true that I'm not suffering? <laughs> I'm not saying you, there's nothing you are going through. We are all going through something. Amen? But I'm not suffering through it because I am above. And not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. And so I, 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 I am not suffering. I am merely being inconvenienced. The perspective. With Resurrection Sunday, you must see everything in your life as just a different perspective. I am not suffering. Because if you are suffering, then Christ suffered in vain. If you are suffering, oh God, you have abandoned me. Oh God, you have in the sweet by and by, Lord, was in it. Uh, uh, Jesus is passing this way. He's passing this way. He's, 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 
he's, he's already gone. Jesus has ascended already. He's not passing by. Because if he's passing by, then you have to wait at the right spot like, black, like blind uh, Bartimaeus and then cry at the right time. Jesus, you are passing this way. I've been waiting 17 years for you to pass this way. Finally, you are here. If I miss this moment, I cannot receive it. That is suffering. Stop suffering in the name of Jesus. Stop suffering in the name of Jesus. It, it just takes a conviction of the resurrection. Because he's alive. Because he's alive. I am more than a conqueror. Because he's alive. I am strong in the Lord. Just, 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 just receive that in your spirit. Otherwise, all the songs we sang, otherwise, Resurrection Sunday is meaningless. You are still suffering. Somebody say amen. You are stuck in Resurrection Sunday. If you are still trying to fight your own battle. I mean, you are stuck on Good Friday if you are still trying to fight your own battle. Jesus fought the battle for you. Jesus overcame. But some of us, you know, we are proud of the fight in us, you know. We just, oh, we just put it down. We know how to fight. I'm not fighting you. Yeah, I know how to war in battle. But it was a fight in the name of, ah, yeah, yeah. Lady, come. Lady, you are Jesus. Come. A fight in the name of Jesus. So, Jesus, stand here. And so, when the enemy attacks, hey, a fight in the name. Ah, hallelujah. A fight. So, no weapon formed against me, sharp. Hey. Many of us want to, if you're stuck on Good Friday, hey, Jesus, stand. Jesus, stop moving. Okay, good. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you're stuck on Good Friday, this is you. I have Jesus with me, but I still have to do my own fight. I have Jesus with me, but I have to say something. I have Jesus with me, but I must fix it. Because if I don't fix it, it's not going to work. No, 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 no. I believe in the resurrection. Jesus, are you alive? Hi, are you alive? Okay, so if you're alive, the Bible says, we are hid in Christ in God. Can touch me. No, 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 no. I am in Christ. So my warfare is in Christ. I say, you know what? I have come to take what is mine in his name. Because if I come in my own name, they say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who is you? But when I come in his name, in him, they can refuse. Your warfare, your identity, your battle has to be in the name of Jesus. Stop trying to fight your own battles. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may sit on the royal throne. Hallelujah. When you are stuck on Good Friday, you fight your own battles. Don't fight your own battles. Somebody say hallelujah. Some of us are so stuck on Good Friday. We are still carrying ungodly and unnecessary crosses. Mm. Declare with me, I resign. Say boldly, I resign as savior of the world. I resign as CEO of the world. I resign as CEO of my family. Mm. Doesn't that feel good? That sounds like a vacation, right? Yeah, let go. Let go. You are the one that you must fix everything. If I don't do it, nothing. You are a liar. Life will go on. You are lying to yourself. If I don't do it, and then nothing will get done. You know, I'm the one who got um, that holds everybody together. No, Jesus is the one that holds everyone together. You are not Jesus. But many of us just can't let go. You have to fix everybody. Nobody can walk past you and have their shoe on lace and you know say something. And, and you, every, everything that passes by, you are an examiner. You have to say everything. Hallelujah. Some things you see. Some, 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 some people have this issue. Because you see something or because they see something, there is this anxiety in them to say it. Like, they can't keep quiet. Because they have seen it, they have to say it. No, you don't have to say it. <laughs> you see, that, that is being stuck on Good Friday. You are carrying, I have to solve my family problems. I have to save my neighborhood. 
I have to save my job. Everybody depends on me. Then look at me. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. I'm suffering because I'm carrying every... Stop it. Resurrection Sunday, Jesus paid it all. So you don't have to carry his cross. So stop carrying unnecessary people. Somebody say amen. amen. Some here is hard. Oh. Some people are alive, but you are carrying them. Some people are dead, and you are still. You know, it's easier to carry somebody who's alive than someone who's dead. Mm-hmm. So maybe part of your life is not part of your of, of what you are going through is not even the devil. You have just picked up. You are just stuck in Good Friday so much. You are carrying dead bodies around. I know that hurts a little bit. I know you feel like, you know, you are the only one who can, who, who can resurrect the dead, so you must bring them along. But some of us are the most, are the world's worst enablers. People are doing wrong, and you feed them wrong. You encourage them to do wrong. Hmm? Should, I, should, I, should I get specific, or, or, or do you catch the message? Uh, okay, you go more specifics, okay. The joker is 21 years old. Doesn't want to work. And you are, are you are there what? Cleaning his bathroom for him and doing his laundry. What's wrong with you? He's old enough to work, but you won't let him work. But he's my son. But, but, but. Bruh. <laughs> Maybe I should, I should send it to Anisia. <laughs> Anisia will fix it. Hallelujah. We are enabling people. Somebody, you see, this is, I've, I've changed a little bit in my, in my, in my, in my pastoring or in my, in my, in my growth in God. At first, right, it's just hold on to everybody. No, 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 no. When I come and I say, let us pray, and you don't want to pray, we won't talk. I am not going to waste time, and then you don't want to do what you are supposed to do. Then I'm enabling you, right? No, 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 no. But one time, I'm, I'm, am I nice? Oh, come on, say, say, say yes. The correct answer is yes. The correct answer is yes. Am I nice? Yes. Good. 100 points. Hallelujah. I am nice, but I can be too nice to the point where I hurt you. If I don't speak the truth to you in love, if I don't stand with you and say, you know what, enough of the training wheels, let's take the training wheels off and let's start moving forward. Because otherwise I have to carry you everywhere. And I am not Jesus. And so guess what? If I'm the one carrying you, you can only go as far as I go. And if I'm carrying everybody and I take one step a year, then that's all you ever take. Stop enabling people around you. Some people need to grow up and break out and break forth. Hallelujah. Don't get stuck at Good Friday. Time to move forward. Somebody say amen. Some people are tolerating the unusual abuse of the enemy. Now, this, 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 is, uh, this is very important, very critical, because um, the enemy plans to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. If there's one thing that is real about our walk with God, it is that the enemy is always hounding. The enemy is always trying to offend. The enemy is always trying to find a way to cut us down. So there's one area of your life you cannot tolerate. That is abuse of the enemy. Jesus already took the slap. You, no, no, no. You can't slap me anymore. And Jesus already took the whoopings. You can't be whooping me anymore. And Jesus took the cross. You can't be putting those weights on me anymore. That is the power he has given you. That because I did it, you can stand in my name and do it. But how long have you tolerated the abuse of the enemy? You do something, you earn an increase, and he comes and he takes it. Then you say, ah, you see, every year, this is what happens. Oh. It's, 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 it's almost like a ritual. I can expect that, you know what, in May, something's going to happen. You have timed your abuse to a schedule. You can predict when things are about to go wrong. You have embraced the abuse of the enemy. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody today? It is time to break through out of Good Friday into the resurrection. It is time to break out of that, that self-condemnation. Some, some, some people are just, you think your righteousness will save you. 
you are bound by works. You are bound by right. No, I must, I must. No, Jesus did it. He did not come to abolish the law, but he also fulfilled it. The law is done. Your righteousness is but filthy rags. So you trying to earn the approval of God by being good and by being nice, it doesn't work. You are still stuck on Good Friday. Walk in the resurrection power of the Lord. Somebody say amen. I'm going to give you three points on how to walk from Good Friday to the resurrection Sunday. Somebody say amen. All right, number one, Father, forgive them. Luke chapter 23, verse number 34. Luke, Luke uh, 23, verse 34. He says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. If you are going to leave Good Friday and enter into Resurrection Sunday, you got to forgive. You got to forgive. That person that you have been hauling around for the past 15 years, it's time to let them go. They are dead weight. If you are waiting for them to come back and say, you know what, like the uh, apology sermon, I am sorry I was wrong. I offended you. It's my fault. Is there anything I can do to make it right? What if you never see them again? You are sitting down parked under bondage waiting for apology. Someone say, I forgive them. They say, you have to learn to forgive quickly. Forgiveness has to be quick. It has to be, listen, I got places to go, man. And listen, I'm walking in the resurrection power of God. I got to let you go. The best advice somebody gave me, one of my youth gave me, <laughs> The, the, the Wednesday before my wedding, on Saturday, I had youth church and everything. Then I was on my way to D.C. for my wedding. And, she's, and I had the, the, the youth gather and give me advice. What, you know, what advice do you have for me? I was listening to them. And one of them said, forgive her before she offends you. Right. Word, word. Forgive before you offend her. Ay, 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 ay. Mm. We don't like the sound of that. But forgive before the. Listen, I have an extra forgiveness in my pocket. Because I know you will offend me. I know I will offend you. But I have an extra forgiveness. You know what? Here it is. It is for my good that I carry that extra forgiveness in my pocket. Otherwise, I'll be stuck at Good Friday waiting for a savior to come beg me. He didn't really mean it. He didn't really mean it. The, what he really meant to say was, okay, now that I receive your apology, I can now let go of this 25-year hurt. Let it go. Let it go. All forgiveness will keep you on Good Friday. You know what happened on Good Friday, right? When he died, guess what? And the, and the, and the area became what? Dark. Aha. Good Friday. All forgiveness will keep you in darkness. Keep you in darkness. Completely dark and always on the cross. Can't you guys see I'm suffering? Can't you see? Can't you see I'm doing all this for you? And you know, you won't come. You won't come and bow down to me. That's, that's unforgiveness. You are waiting for them to leave everything. Rush to your cross. And say, oh great one. I am sorry I have offended you. Against heaven have I sinned and I have sinned against you. Please forgive me, if you will. May I kiss your ring? May I wash your feet? It will never happen. Some people never come to that. So for you to move to Resurrection Sunday, let forgiveness be your anthem. Be quick to forgive. Be quick, be quick to forgive. He, he said what? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Like, you know what? Man, you don't know who you're messing with. Man, I forgive you, man. Let it go. Let it go. I'm seeing your faces and you are trying to smile hard, but I see this is hitting you hard. So forgive. Someone say forgive. I was, I was, I was re rewriting my book from my, my, my first book and I was re-editing it and I just got to the point where the secret of your destiny is hidden in your childhood. Everything you need to know about your destiny is hidden within the first 10 years of your life. It's all there. If you go there and dig it, listen, the way you are today was because of something that happened between the first 10 years of your life. 
is there. Everything that Jesus was, was revealed around his birth. It was all right there. As I go back there to say that many of us are still carrying hurt from our childhood. And he has completely diverted you from the plan of God for your life. You are still stuck in Good Friday. And so when, when the blessing of God comes, it comes in darkness. You don't see it. When the goodness of God comes, it comes. But you don't see it because you are completely hurt and you have not chosen to forgive. Whatever happened in your childhood, yeah, it was painful, was it not? Was it, was, it, was it painful? Can I hear from you? Was it painful? Did you deserve it? Did it happen? Forgive it. You can't forgive what you don't acknowledge. Oh, nothing happened. Nothing happened. If nothing happens, then there's, there's nothing to forgive. But if something happened, then I can forgive you. So admit something happened. Admit you were wronged. Admit something was taken from you or something was added to you that was not God. Admit it. It hurt. It was painful. But because of Jesus, I choose to forgive. Somebody say amen. The second thing you must do, quickly, the second thing you must do is die to the flesh. Somebody say die to the flesh. Jesus could have said, hey, 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 hey. You know what? Uh, um, um, I'm going to resurrect, but I don't want to die. If there's no dying, <laughs> there is no resurrection. If you want to walk in the resurrection power of God, you have to die to your flesh. Somebody say amen. And the way we define the flesh, or the way I define the flesh, is this is how I've always been. If you, if you are fond of saying that, instead of changing your ways, oh no, but I know that's who I am. No, we are tired of that's who you are. Change. We don't like it. It's making us all uncomfortable. Pop it. Hallelujah. We come up with cute phrases to defend bad habits. If it is wrong, it is wrong. If it stinks, it stinks. Stop. Hallelujah. So die to your flesh. Die to your selfish ways. If you're going to experience the resurrection power of God, you can't be elevated. Hear how awkward it is to walk. This is resurrection Sunday. This is good Friday. <laughs> this is Saturday. So <laughs> Friday. Saturday, Sunday. You can't say I am walking in the, in the resurrection of God and still in Good Friday, in the flesh, in my old way of doing things. Where you have to walk, everybody thinks there's a problem. And guess what? If I am the evidence of the resurrection, right? I am the evidence. You are the evidence of, of, the, of the resurrection because Christ lives in you. And so I'm resurrected, but I still live my life like I'm in the flesh. What do you think the world, you think the world wants to come to the God I serve when I'm walking like this? Like, what is wrong with you? You are confused, you are getting tired, and the world is like, I don't know about that, but something's wrong. If we are going to be the evidence of the resurrection, you must die to the flesh. And I'll give this counsel to all of you. I give it to the first service, I'll give it to you too. If you are looking to get married, come and say amen. If you're looking to get married, right? The only way you qualify to get married is if you are willing to die. And so maybe I come with, with an application for me. I have three girls. God pray for the men. <laughs> they have to read the Bible front and back 17 times. Plant three churches. Go to, <laughs> go, to <laughs> go, go on 85 mission trips and then they can talk to them then maybe we can give you the first digit of their phone number. Hallelujah. <laughs> God help. But the requirement to qualify to get married is that you must be willing to die. Some of you want to get married, but you are willing to let go of yourself. Marriage doesn't work like that. You have to be willing to let go of yourself. And so that is the qualification. Then you qualify to date. Hallelujah. Qualification to date is I sign up to die. Right? But the union will never happen until you actually die. And so now you are 
qualified to get married, right? And say, you know what? Uh, do you? I do. Do you? I do. Oh, you're all smiling. You know, hey, we do. We do. And you're happy, right? That's good. But the union will not happen until you die. At first, you were willing to die to the flesh and die to your old ways. But now, you must do it. So if you are still in your marriage saying, I am willing to die, there's a problem. Because you have not taken the step to make it one. To make it one, you must die. Completely surrender. A man shall leave his father and his mother and be united unto his wife and the two shall become one. If the two have become one, where do you start and where does the person start? It's one. The best example I saw was Play-Doh. Take one color, take another color, mix it together. Now there's no distinction. You are one. But if you want to keep, this is my right. This is what I want to do. <laughs> and this is, a, okay, maybe you should have married at all. Hallelujah. Maybe I should, I should stop talking. You guys are looking at me like, <laughs> Pastor, you are saying stuff. I am saying stuff. Amen. Be willing to die to the flesh if you're going to walk in Resurrection Sunday. And the last point, to go from Good Friday to resurrection is to walk in authority. See, walk in authority. You have to walk in authority. Jesus Christ already died and the authority has already been given unto you. And so you must exercise that authority. That means that you have to get angry a little bit. Someone say a little bit. You must get vexed in your spirit. If Listen, you will not change what you tolerate. Unless you are tired of something, you never change it. Unless something is in your way, look at your room right now. Just close your eyes. Just meditate on your room right now. Or your car. Or your house right now. There are some things that have been there for, a, for ancient of days. <laughs> you are supposed to move it. You say one day, I'm going to use this elliptical machine. <laughs> this treadmill, one day I am going to use it. But you have not used it, right? Guess what? Because it is out of the way, you tolerate it. It's not bothering you. Is it bothering you? No. You look at everybody. You say good morning. He says good morning back. You say, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. And then we keep going. <laughs> Nothing happens. The moment it comes in your way, you, you want to do something about it. The moment you can't live your life without it, now you're like, hmm, and this must stop. Who put this here? It must be moved. But if it's out of sight, If you are not tired, if you have not come to the place where you are willing, where you are a little vexed in your spirit, that this is not the plan of God for my life. I am going through some, 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 some serious things right now, spiritual right now, and it's, 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 it's vexing my spirit in the right way. I'm hearing stories, I'm, I'm praying, God is showing me that I'm like, ah, whoa, ah, enough of this. Again, enough of the title without the resources. Enough of you are great. You are, you know, it gets to a point. How many of you get to a point where you are tired of prophetic words? You hear prophetic word and you are like, enough, enough, thank you. I want to see it. Oh, and you will be great. And you will be mighty. It's been 25 years. I, where, where, where is it? But if you are not tired of not seeing what has been said, then you don't care. But when you are tired of it, and you are saying, Lord, let it manifest. There's a little vex, little vexation in your spirit. And that's where you take to prayer. You begin to exercise the authority. Devil, enough is enough. The something said that I shall no longer be blameless if I destroy the Philistines. When he moves, they move. When he does something, they, they try to interrupt him. He went and tied the tails of foxes, set them on fire, released them into the farms of the Philistines, burn. He says, now I will no longer be blameless. Are you tired of the situation or do you consider it just one or the other? You must walk in authority. Tell us authority. Authority. Authority is no control. Authority is no manipulation. Authority is, 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 is that I stand upon the word of God. When I speak, I know the angels of God are backing me. When I speak, I know 
heaven is backing me. Therefore, I can throw stones because I am backed by heaven. I can release the word of God because I am backed by heaven. That is authority. And so you don't let a situation remain when you are standing on the word of God. Why stand on the word of God and not activate it? So I want you to get mad. Seriously, I want your prayer level to go from, oh dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for the weather. Thank you for the beautiful air we have. Mm, oh Lord, mm, thank God for um, Virginia be so nice. Lord, mm, Thank you Lord Jesus for chicken wings. Thank you. Stop that kind of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's get vexed a little bit. Get vexed in your spirit a little bit. And because the plan of God for your life is greater than you are living right now. The purpose of God for your life is mightier than what you are seeing right now. And the enemy has thrown roadblocks and, and, and all interruptions and delay. We cannot say that is okay. It is not okay. It is not okay to tolerate the abuse of the enemy. So I must walk in authority. There's a new sheriff in town. I come. With the badge, in the name of Jesus, I have been authorized as an ambassador of Christ uh, to enforce the kingdom of God in my life. And so therefore, anybody, anybody who is not of God, you got to go. Every situation, I uh, sign now, change. You begin to speak. Let there be a little vexation in your spirit. If, 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 if it doesn't happen, you will not pray the way you need to pray. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, available, the effectual fervent is not... Thank you, Lord. Fervent is boiling point. I am to the point where I am tired. I can't stand this. In the name of Jesus, I stand upon your word. Oh, God, uh, Daddy, I will not let go. I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go. I'm not leaving this place until you release to me the resurrection promise. There's a promise that comes from the resurrection. There's a life from the resurrection. If we are not living that life, Time to walk in authority. Activate your authority. Walk in authority. It says that I will give you the keys of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Some of us are playing with our keys. Oh, sounds like music. Oh, it's beautiful. You are doing nothing with it. You are just enjoying twirling your keys around. Exercise your authority. And, and, and this is my encouragement to you. Get vexed in your spirit. Just a little bit. Remember that picture you put about where you want to go? You know, I want to go to Hawaii. You know what? In 10 years, I want to buy this. In two years, I want to do this. And then all of a sudden, it's been longer and than you expected. And the picture has now changed. And things are collecting dust. You have to be upset about that. You have to get vexed in your spirit. No, enough is enough. So by the spirit of God. And in the name of Jesus, you know, when you, are, when you are vexed in your spirit, something happens where you don't get tired of praying. You don't get tired. Because until I see it, every day, you will see. Every day, you will see. Every day, you, you are fighting. Every, until I receive the victory, devil, I'm not giving up. But when you don't have that urgency, then guess what? You say, you know what, I mean, every single year we lose three cows, you know, four goats, you know. A few accidents here and there, you know what, money's gone. It's, it's okay. It's not okay. Someone say, it's not okay. If I am the evidence of the resurrection, if I am the evidence of the resurrection and the spirit of God lives in me, then my life must change. Somebody say amen. 